From 1984 till today, the Museum of Masala Tapestries has been exhibiting eight Flemish tapestries from the 16th century, narrating historical events of the Jewish-Roman War. But how did these extraordinary treasures appear in Masala? In 1589, Monsignor Lombardo, Archbishop of Messina, former Dean of Marsala, donated the tapestries to the main church, Chiesa Madre, in Marsala. Between 1550 and 1560, Monsignor Lombardo was sent by the Bishop of Mazzara to the Spanish court to ask for exemption from some taxes. He did not only succeed, but was also proclaimed as a chaplain of the court and, legend has it, became confessor of the Queen of Spain. It is said that the tapestries were donated to Bishop Lombardo by the Queen in 1584, when he became Archbishop of Messina. Although this is not historically documented, one thing is certain, the artistic nobility of these artifacts and their value only justifies a royal connection. What exactly is a tapestry and why is it considered a work of art? To understand the importance of tapestry, we first need to look at the process of tapestry making that starts with a cartoon, a picture painted by great artists such as Michelangelo, Raffaello, and Mantegna, just to name a few, that was projected into the tapestry in every detail with woolen or silk warps attached to the wooden frame. As it was all done by hand, the work was very slow and only four or five square centimeters were done in a day. The tapestries that we are about to describe were made with a technique that was ahead of a time compared to what we call the Golden Age of Flemish tapestry of the 16th century. Only best quality yarn that could survive for centuries was used and warp alto licho was done vertically. Which tapestry maker made these eight wonderful pieces? And do we know the name of a person who created them? On the borders of all tapestries are the initials BB, the signature of a famous 16th century Flemish tapestry maker, Brussels Brabant, that confirms the origin and the work of their most artistic and commercially successful period. The tradition of Flemish origin shown in these tapestries is an extraordinary union with Italian inspiration attributed to Michelangelo and Raffaello. The other initials, C and T, probably refer to the tapestry maker Cornelius Tseretz. What are the special characteristics of our tapestries? Physical monumentality of the characters with compositional unity on perspective naturalism, social and religious content, elegance in the movements of the figures and attention to detail. The colors are vivid with a predominance of red garnet and blue in the garments, green and yellow in plants and soil, and blues and whites in the picture of mountains that are almost always present. Every tapestry has a border of 48 centimeters in width, with pictures of garlands, vases and fruit. On the vertical edges there is lively ornamentation and the figure of Apollo playing his lyre and young bearers of amphorae. In the center of the horizontal edges, an identical scene of sacrifice is repeated. Tapestries, as we said, narrate the historic events of the Jewish-Roman War as was recorded by Tacito and Giuseppe Flavio. Hypothesis that there are some hidden symbols of the actual political and religious situation at the time, as the independence of the Netherlands and its church reformation movement were fought for on the one hand and the Spanish court on the other. And now we present these eight wonders. First tapestry, 262 by 348 centimeters. The siege of Jotopata was the most important event of Vespasiano's military campaigns against the Jews, 
Giuseppe Flavio, a priest, historian and defender of the Jabata city, comes out of the cave where he had fled dressed as a warrior. In the scene dominates a tribune and a soldier who is taking him by his left arm and with his right arm raised, trying to take him out of the cage. Michelangelo's inspiration can be found in muscularity, in the poses and attitudes of the figures. In the distance, Vespasiano is pictured seated in his tent and surrounded by his warriors, awaiting Giuseppe Flavio, who saved his life, but was sentenced to leg cuffs on the ankles. He predicts that Vespasiano and his son Tito become emperors of Rome. On the left side of the background can be seen a number of silhouettes of the soldiers and in the center stands the mountain top. Second tapestry, 395 by 348 centimeters. Near Tiberiade, a certain Gesù, son of Tobia, ambushes a group of Romans. The city of Tiberiade, wrongly accused of the assault, implores the protection of its king Agrippa, pictured in the center with the crown on his head. Agrippa reveals to Vespasiano the name of the person responsible for the attack. Vespasiano, in front of the tent, with his right arm raised in a sign of anger, is surrounded by warriors and nobles. At his feet are begging inhabitants of Tiberiade. In the foreground we can see two kneeling women who brought their children to relent Vespasiano's anger. On the right side of the background we can see fighting soldiers. On the left is pictured Gesù, son of Tobia, with his companions escaping with the loot wrested from the Romans. It is inspired by Raphael, in particular the appearance of rooms and lodges. Third tapestry, 320 by 348 centimeters. In the year 69, some Roman soldiers gathered to acclaim Vespasiano Emperor. Vespasiano doesn't want to accept it. He prefers the security of his private life to the danger of the Imperium. The soldiers decide to use force. One soldier is about to pull out his sword. Another attempts to pull a coup against Vespasiano's halberd, but is grabbed by the elbow of a notable. In the end, Vespasiano accepts and sits on a makeshift throne erected on three steps under a canopy placed between two trees. By the foot of the throne lies a dog, a symbol of fidelity that the soldiers swore to him and a young Vestal. Two old important persons, one holding a sword and the other a globe, are about to place the imperial crown on his head. From Vespasiano's face, we can read his disagreement, and the gesture of his open arms says, and be whatever you want. Clearly, we can see the inspiration of Michelangelo's mannerism. Fourth tapestry, 320 by 348 centimeters. The proclamation of Vespasiano as Emperor of Rome quickly spread throughout the Roman Empire, arousing jubilant explosions as they knew his value and wisdom. In this tapestry, Vespasiano, portrayed with a crown on his head, is proclaimed Emperor of Rome. A Syrian king, to show him allegiance and obedience, sends an ambassador who, kneeling, opens a casket and offers the emperor armor, amphorae, precious objects and crowns. The depiction is certainly inspired by the Renaissance rather than mannerism. Around Vespasiano, under a flag, we notice soldiers with spears and swords. At the bottom, on the right, we see a fortress under Roman siege and the valiant defense of the Jews. The scene is framed by a beautiful background. Fifth tapestry, 400 by 359 centimeters. Vespasiano, after the proclamation, remembers that Giuseppe Flavio, at the time of his capture, had predicted that he would become Emperor of Rome and decides to give him freedom. Vespasiano is portrayed sitting on a throne surrounded by warriors and in front of him is the gigantic figure of Giuseppe Flavio. A worker with pliers sets him free from the chain on his right ankle 
Another, with the axe, splits the circle on the left one. Vespasiano orders a soldier to take a cup full of coins from the treasure box and offer it to Giuseppe Flavio. Top right, some seniors seem to comment the Emperor's magnanimous act. On the left side, a second scene is captured. Vespasiano on horseback, followed by soldiers, is blocked by an old man who kneels and offers him a wreath, and on the left, a bowed woman. Sixth Tapestry 454 by 353 centimeters. The tapestry in its central part represents the battle between a Jew, Jonata, and Roman Prisco. The Jew tries to free himself from the powerful grip of his opponent that tries to bite his shoulder. Around them rages a bloody battle. Wounded soldiers, frightened horses, shields, swords, broken lances. On the ground are tangles of fighters. At the bottom right we see the scene of a naval battle. Four vessels with soldiers in full combat. We can see 40 figures of soldiers, defined in detail despite their small size. In the background is a recurring element of a chain of mountains. Seventh Tapestry 534 by 354 centimeters. Tito, son of Emperor Vespasiano and commander of the Roman forces in Palestine, is sitting on a pedestal in the shape of a canopy, flanked by two women and surrounded by his warriors. In front of him is kneeling the Duke Jesu of Nabut, handing him a gift of two golden candlesticks and the book for the sacred rite. There are, with him, a Levite carrying on his shoulder a bundle with the sacred vestments, the guardian of the temple with two vases, and a woman with a box in her hand. In the background we see the siege of the Romans to the last circle of the temple's walls, strenuously defended by the Jews. In some places the assigned walls allow the passage of the Roman soldiers. To note is the extraordinary work skill. Horses and riders are small, but defined in all their details and movements. Eighth Tapestry 253 by 354 centimeters. Tito Victorious offers a sacrifice to Jove to propitiate him after all the ruins of the Jewish war and the destruction of the temple. At the center we see the altar, on which they burn the wood and odiferous herbs. Fire releases a light cloud. To the right of the altar is Tito kneeling, with his head turned up looking at the sky. On the left side is the Jewish priest, with the mitre on his head and the holy garments. On the altar we see the open sacred book, clearly written in Hebrew. In front of the altar kneels a young woman holding in her left hand a golden cup and with her right hand she is removing the cover. On the ground they notice the helmet of Taito, an amphora, a sink, a roll and everything needed for the sacred rite. In the background is a scene of countryside and the mountains.